People, this goes out. You know, we have a third church out there someplace, and it's uh, great to speak to those people as well, a third campus. Um, and people down in Fellowship Hall, high down there, are just seeing everybody. So it's, it's um, good to be able to do this with technology, but you got to get used to the technology. And so, so today, uh, before I get started, Ben Wise is home, and he gave me a joke. And I see he's not here. Ben? Oh, okay, Ben. So is Abby with him? Uh, Abby's not with him, so she didn't come, probably because I'm going to use this joke for Ben. But So Ben, I'm giving you all the credit for this. So um, what did Batman say to Robin before they got in the Batmobile? Get in the Batmobile. <laughs> Robin, get in the Batmobile. I thought that was kind of cute, but okay. <laughs> all right, so... Uh, here we are. There, there's, we're going in the Ten Commandments series, and I'm going to tell you right up front that this one, um, I've preached on this before, and it was about 18 years ago I preached on this. And, you know, as I'm looking at my old notes and, and looking at my new stuff, I'm going, what was I thinking? <laughs> Has anybody ever done that? That your, your theology or different things that, even at work, if it's not having to do with this, that it's like, well, we used to do it. So, you know, there's some things that changed in me. And so, so I found myself just kind of all gnarling up inside, wondering, you know, what, you know. And so I did a lot more reading and research and praying. And, and then I, when I was done praying, I started praying again. I mean, know that sometimes you just got to keep praying and say, God, what do you want? So we'll see how this goes for me today. But just as a reminder, we're talking about the, the top 10 list of gods. And there's certain laws that are t absolutely irrefutable, that you, you cannot deny these laws. That because um, if you intend to live a life of thriving, a life to its fullest, like we sung today, you know, if you tend to live a life that's thriving to its fullest, you've got to be respecters of these laws. You've got to look at these laws. For example, in the laws of nature, the laws of gravity. How many know that if you would get on the roof of this building and you walk off the roof, you're still going to splat whether you agree with the law or not? Right? You, it's just how it is. It, irrefutable. The, um, the laws of physics, the third law of physics says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. How many people ever seen that? My dad, my dad explained that so well to us boys. <laughs> you know, that every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And it's pretty amazing, especially when it was on the negative side. <laughs> you know, so um, we do those. those they're, they're, you, in other words, in everything, you reap what you sow. That's what these laws are all about. You reap what you sow. They're, they're going back to the Bible. They're biblical in, in that sense. The Bible teaches us that. You know, there's a, the second law of thermodynamics. It says that everything is in a decomposing and declining uh, state, mode, not, not getting any better. You, you, put a, you put a piece of wood outside and you let it sit outside. What's going to happen to that wood over time? It's going to rot. It's not going to plant another tree. The, law is, the third law of thermodynamics says that it's going to decay, it's going to rot, it's going to do this. But more importantly, God's laws, God's principles for life namely and blessing, namely the Ten Commandments, are what we're looking at today. We need, to, we need to honor those, we need to watch those, we need to follow those. We've been looking at the Ten and how they apply to our lives. So, let's read the Ten Commandments to the point we're at today. And I'm going to invite you to read along with me, okay? Let's read. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Can you move that for me, Jeff, please? Thank you. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, 
for God will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, I can't get this, to, there we go, nor your maidservant, <laughs> back me up buddy, thank you, nor your maidservant, nor maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the seas and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Um, are there any Jewish people here today? We've had people who were Jewish with us before. Who is God speaking to here? He's speaking specifically to his people. And so the dilemma is that we are Gentiles and we've been grafted into the family. And so the dilemma is we don't come from that Jewish tradition, that Jewish background. So that, that means there, there are some things that we have to learn and understand about these things. Today, many people have a notion that the Sunday is the, the day, only day people have left to enjoy for themselves. So it's okay to, to do all sorts of things on Sunday that we couldn't do during the week. It's okay to, to skip church. It's okay to do as we please. It's okay to, to, to take short trips. It's okay to do this, do that, do these. And we're just going to blow church off. And we're going to blow God off because I need my day. I need my this. I need my that. It's okay to do my emails. It's okay for work emails to catch up because I don't want to get behind. A lot of people are in that mode. And let me just say this. Once you get in that mode, it's hard to get out of it. How many know that once you get in the mode of not going to church, not worshiping with other believers, it's really hard to go back. It's really hard to do that. You think about this. We live in a um, computer age. And I don't know what's going on with my clicker here, but let's. There we go in a computerized age where um, the more we're able to figure out the ways to save time through automation. Have you ever noticed this? Through automation with computers and factories, the more we're able to figure out how to save time doing this, doing that, we seem to get busier. We seem to take the time that we've saved and instead of enjoying the time that we've saved, we, we add more to it. And then we got to figure something else out to add into that time. One of the problems I have is that very thing. I'm just, and, uh, you know, I was, I was thinking last night, I thought, man, I, should, I need a mirror up here so I can preach to myself on this one. I mean, really, there's just a huge amount of sermons that it's like Tim preaching to Tim. And so, you know, we, it's just easy to fill time up. There's times when I'm just sitting and resting and, and not doing anything, but inside of me, it's like, ah, you need to be productive. Anybody ever struggle with that? You need to go do something. You need to, you need to be active and doing. You can't just sit there. You know, it, it's, it's really hard. I, most of you, a lot of you are retired, so maybe you understand that, but probably not. Probably not. Some of us are just driven to be achievers, to do, and, 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 and we try to cram in to so many things into a day. There's not enough time, you know. Um, and I just tell you, when it comes to technology, I'm not 100% convinced it's our friend. Because of that, the computer age is speeding everything up. And many people, because of the culture we live in, because of things we do, because of what's coming up, it's let's do this, let's do that, let's go, 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 and do this, have concluded that since we're no longer under the restrictions of the Sabbath, that we're not obligated to respect the Lord's Day as well. And let me just say that that's not true. There's no truth in that at all. So before we tackle this, I need to clarify some things. One is, in the Old Testament, um, for Jesus, for his disciples, and for the Jewish people today, Saturday, actually Friday, sundown Friday to sundown Saturday, was, is their Sabbath day. 
That is the Sabbath. So when we talk about Sabbath, that's what you can keep in mind. A lot of times when we talk about Sabbath, like when we put it on the board out there, is a Sabbath day still holy, people driving by thought we meant Sunday. How many know that is not the Sabbath day? The Sabbath day is Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. Sunday is called the Lord's Day. Or some people refer to it as a Christian Sabbath. Um, that, that we Gentiles have. So, you know, so we have these two days we need to distinguish between the Lord's Day and the Sabbath Day. For, for 2,000 years, almost all Christians have observed Sunday as the Lord's Day. Jesus' resurrection, and why the, the reason why is because His resurrection happened on, a Sunday, on that Sunday. And so in remembrance of that, the first day of the week, and in honor, the early Christians met to worship on that day, not as a Christian Sabbath, actually, but as the worship of Jesus. In fact, Acts chapter 2, um, you got a lot of scriptures. I'm going to tell you this right up front on your scripture notes. Uh, they're not, I'm not using all those scriptures, but I know Sam uses some things. So I did some research for Sam for his Wednesday Bible talk so he can, so he can do that. And um, one day when we get back into Bible study, they'll be using those things. So I gave extra ones so you can look at those things. But in Acts chapter 2, verse 46, it says, Day by day, the, the, the early disciples were continuing with, in, one, with one, in one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. They were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart. Notice that they were doing it every day. They were going together. They're meeting every day. They weren't just meeting on Sunday or on that day. So the first Christians met regularly on the first day of the week, our Sunday, not the Sabbath day, our Saturday. Look at this. Oh, excuse me, going on saying, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to the number day by day those who were being saved. Let me just say real quick something about that. You notice the blessing that comes out of that? The blessing that happens when the believers come together, not just coming together, but come together to do what? Praise God, to worship God, to worship Jesus, to bring adoration. And when the worship team gets together and we, we practice and we do stuff, getting, it's all about bringing you guys before the throne of grace so that we can praise God and give glory to God because that's where the glory belongs. It doesn't belong to any person, anything. We talked about that in the idols or anything. It belongs to Him. And the, the promise and the blessing is that God was adding to their number. And I still believe He does that today. I believe that churches, as we worship and honor and praise God, people know that and God adds to their number. God's the one who called you to be here today. God's the one who called you into, into faithful service for Him. God's the one who called you into saying yes to Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Man doesn't. We're the tool. We're the vessel. But God is the one who does that. And I believe that God is still blessing, blessing today. It is great to see it. We're pretty well physically distanced here. I, I don't know how you feel about about that stuff, you know, but up in the balcony, you guys are all green anyway. You're just, we're the rebels, we're going for it, you know, and, and, we're, and, and uh, down in the, in, the, in the fellowship hall, those watching you either overflow or you're really red, and that's okay. We respect that and honor that too, you know, but so it's great to see the room full. It's great to say, well, we're going to put more chairs, you know, we're going to have to fix that one day, but um, I hope we get to that one day. Anyway, so going on, it went on in, in, uh, in Acts 20. It tells us this. There we go. Come on. There we go. Well, let me back up here. We are way out of sync here. Can you go back for me? I might have. Oh, I don't have these on here. They're on your notes. You're going to you're gonna have to read these. I'm sorry about that. On the first day of the week, when we were gathered together to break bread... Paul began talking to them, intending to leave the next day, and he prolonged his message until midnight. That's Acts 20, verse 7, 8. But notice it says, when? When did they gather together? On the first day of the week. Of the week. That, that's Sunday. They gathered together. And also in 1 Corinthians 16, 2, the Apostle Paul says, On the first day of every week, each one of you is to put aside and save as he may prosper, so that no collection is made when I come. When, again, once again, what is he saying? He said, when you come together... You meet together on that first day of the week, take up an offering, you do your things, you do whatever you're doing, but take up, make sure you have it in mind what you're going to do, 
And, and so there, there is that thing. Some people say, well, for us, we should still be observing the Saturday, the, the Saturday Sabbath. And let me just say that there's plenty of evidence in the Bible we're getting about that the early Christians meeting on that first day of the week. And we're going to get to some more of that. You know, a common mistake in Sabbath keeping debate is the idea that the Sabbath was the day of worship. A lot of people say we, we they should be worshiping on Sabbath. And we know that Jewish people do. We know that Seventh-day Adventist people, they use their worship on, that sa- on the Sabbath day. Uh, but that wasn't the Sabbath command. As we read this, we didn't see that in that command. The Sabbath command was to do what? To do no work. To honor God and give Him glory. And how do you do that? By not working, by resting. God, God put everything in place. God put the stars in the sky. God put the mountains where they belong. God put Lake Michigan where it belongs. He did all his creative work. He created man and women in the six days. And then he took the seventh day off and rested. And I really believe that's because he knew that we would emulate him. He created men and people, humans, in what? His image, right? We're created in His image. We're created to do as He, he does. He works six days. Do you really think that God needed to rest after He did that? I mean, as we read the Scriptures, God spoke all things into being. i got to put a mountain there. I mean, it wasn't like God's going, Oh, man, I just, oh, I'm just so tired from speaking so much. I, can't, I don't think I can get that mountain over there. I don't, I'm not sure about that star. Over there. No. God didn't need any of that. God didn't need to rest, but he did it for our benefit so that we could be sure to rest. And because he understood that we, created in his image, need to do this. Yes, Jews in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, in modern times, use Saturday as a day of worship. But that's not the essence of the command. It's not about worship. It's about rest. In fact, the book of Acts, whenever meeting with the Sabbath, I looked this up. I was looking up Sabbath in, in, in the New Testament, especially in Acts when the first church started. And the, when they were meeting on the Sabbath, that meeting was between, always between Jews and or Gentile converts to Judaism, not the early Christians. When they met together, when it talks about meeting together on the Sabbath in the book of Acts, it's never about the early Christians. It's always has something to do with Jewish people, the Hebrew people. So the question is, how important is the Sabbath? How important really is it to keep? Well, on one hand, the Sabbath is important, but not in a legalistic sense of the Sabbath, like the Pharisees would make, make her very legalistic. God made this day of rest for the good of us, for our, our, our as people. He never intended it to be a chain to enslave us to something. How many know that God's laws should never be enslaving us to keeping that? Because when you start keeping those laws, because it's a, it's a God do this I gotta do that I gotta do this I don't I don't smoke I don't chew I don't run with those that do and I don't do you know those types of things when you start doing that you're doing it about it becomes a works issue and how many know it's never about works it's about grace it's not about hyper grace okay and it's not about this this hyper legalism either it's somewhere in between there we got to manage those things he never intended for it to be a, something to enslave us. In Colossians chapter 2, um, it tells us this. Paul's teaching and he says, Therefore, no one is to act as your judge in regard to food or drink or in respect to a festival or a new moon or a, what's that word or those words? What is it? Sabbath, Sabbath day. Things which are a mere shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. How many know everything we're doing is a shadow of what's coming in glory? God set up that first tabernacle like in glory. God's doing everything like in glory. We're just practicing. This is a practice for for heaven one day, and it's only a shadow. And And Paul is saying, hey, we don't judge people. Somebody's not keeping the Sabbath day like you do. We don't judge them. Somebody's, somebody's eating this kind of food, they're, they're eating their pork, they're eating their whatever, you don't judge them. Yes, if it's right, if somebody of you, some of you are eating broccoli and spinach, there's no judgment on my account. I'm not judging you on that. Just don't judge me. <laughs> so don't let anybody judge you by how you choose to observe the Sabbath day, is what Paul's saying, and, or maybe on what day you choose to have the Sabbath. 
So also in Romans 14, 5, the Apostle Paul says, change me there, Jeff, please. I'll just have you change me from now on, okay? One person regards one day above the another. Another regards every day alike. Each person, person must be fully convinced in his own mind. It's interesting that in this commandment is one where it says you got to be convinced what it's about. We're going to get the commandments about not murdering, not stealing, and not doing it. Those are definite commandments. And we got had commandments about you shall not have take the name of your Lord your God in vain. You should you shouldn't make idols for yourself. But in this one, we're seeing that hey, it's up to you. It's up to you on what you're doing here with these things. Um, followers of Jesus, Sabbath keeping is a matter matter of spiritual freedom. Um, you know, not as a chain, like I said earlier. Sabbath keeping is an issue that God's word tells us to not be judging each other. And Sabbath keeping is something that every Christian needs to be fully convinced about in his or her mind if they want to, um, what they, how they want to keep it and how they want to do that. So, what does it mean for you and me? How do we apply this? What does it mean? I, I don't think it's necessarily a, and a, and just a practical application. I don't think it's necessarily a sin to uh, run a road race on a Sunday. Um, um, but I think it would be wrong to violate your own conscience. If your conscience calls you, if you feel God's calling you to live a certain way, I think that would be wrong. Um, there are other rules that man's made that I don't think are necessarily valid. I, my uncle was a, a deacon in a Beachy Amish church. And they didn't believe that Beachy Amish church, for those that don't understand, um, um, they didn't listen to radio, they didn't have TV. He wore a straight collar and jacket in the church and he was um, a leader in the church. And um, they, you know, were not Amish, but they weren't quite like we are either. So drove cars, had cars. Uh, he had a had beautiful, beautiful wood shop. Um, actually made amazing kitchen cabinets. Um, but anyway, so he was a deacon in that church and it was wrong. Their church said it was wrong to watch a ball game on Sunday. It was wrong to, if it was wrong to watch one, it was wrong, definitely wrong to play softball on Sunday. And Kathy and I like softball. We, we like we played a lot of softball in our day, and it was wrong to do a lot, wrong to swim, go swimming on Sunday. The, their church said you stay home. You know, some of you probably come from a background that was almost like that. anybody anybody kind of have that kind of background? Yeah, yeah. We got one lone one. Thank you for your true confession, Larry. There's others maybe that <laughs> you know. But we we I started that I remember those things. But I, I do want to say I do rem admire those people who are zealous and trying to keep the Sabbath, even even um, even Christian Sabbath on a Sunday. I had friends back in Indiana that wouldn't go out to eat at restaurants on Sundays because they're trying to keep the Sabbath. They wouldn't go shopping. They wouldn't do a lot of those things and trying to keep. And I I, I admire and respect that. Uh, they're attempting to take God's word seriously, and which for them, which happens, I mean, no, it happens far too seldom in our church culture today that we're taking his word seriously for what it's got. And here, CFC, we really need to take it seriously and we're trying to. So admittingly, as I was working through this, I thought that, you know what? No one has to work on sat on the, whether it's a, a church, a Sunday Sabbath or the Sabbath day. No one has to work on those days. You can, you can work that. You can work on another day. There's five other days you can work. Then I found myself getting legalistic on that. You know, I thought, oh, I drew myself up short or God drew me up short. And I said, wow, hey, that's not right. So understand how the Lord intends the Sabbath to be applied. Sunday is not as important as some people really believe the Sabbath is a way of being and doing. But on the other hand, that's one hand. On the other hand, you have five fingers. <laughs> you guys didn't get that one. <laughs> the Sabbath is more important than other people think. And even though Jesus condemns the strict um, view of the Sabbath, uh, which the Pharisees held, he doesn't reject the Sabbath day. There's a story in Matthew chapter 12. Jesus and his disciples are on a walk on the Sabbath. There's other people there. They're walking through, you know, some of you know the story. They're walking through the grain field and the disciples are picking a heads of grain and eating, the, eating that. And the Pharisees said, wait a minute. These guys are breaking the law. You can't harvest. You can't do those things for, on the Sabbath day. That's against the Sabbath law. And Jesus says, what? He said, wait. You don't understand. 
God created man for the Sabbath, not the Sabbath for man. God, you know, Jesus is, is take us down a notch. And, and I don't, he didn't subscribe to the forsakal way of leading. The principle of Sabbath is that one day a week should be reserved for rest and worship. And I personally believe it still applies, even though I struggle with that. I struggle with that. The fourth commandment is relevant for all people, for all times and all places, because it's based on the, upon the actions of the creator of the universe. Look at Exodus chapter 20, like I said earlier. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that's in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So whether we live at the time of Christ or 2,000 years earlier or 2,000 years after Jesus now, God does expect Sabbath keeping to, take, to give us a break so that we can rest. There's a restaurant in Middlebury, some of Indiana. Some of you have been there. It's a huge, probably the biggest restaurant in Indiana. It started as a small, small mom and pop restaurant. But the owner said, we're going to take Sunday off and observe it as a holy day, a Sabbath day. God blessed them because of what they did. Das Dutchman Essen House. Larry, you, you guys have been down there. And um, it, in Middlebury, it seats over a thousand people. They have a um, hotel on the property. They have, and because they were honoring God by resting on his day, giving a day of the week to him. Um, so in, in, in holding either to a literal Sabbath or to a Christian Sabbath, we need to make sure that we avoid the legalism as we do it. There's nothing wrong, I believe, with, with, uh, with stopping at a gas station to pick up a gallon of milk on the way home. Well, it's kind of hard here, but you can do that you know, in some places, you know. There's nothing wrong with, occasion, with watching a, a football game or, or whatever. If, you, if you're taking a rest, we're, we're coming together on the Christian Sabbath day. Today is that day. We're coming together to worship, to pay, to, to pay homage to God, to worship our Creator. You know, what you do the rest of the day is resting in, in the Lord and taking time off, you know, is so important. Um, but the primary, that's the primary focus of these days. And some of you are thinking, well, Tim, this all sounds great, but I got to work on some Sundays. You know, some people have to work on Sundays. Back there, I say, yeah, I, I got to work on some Sundays. What are you telling me, Tim? Yeah, some jobs require that. And I'm going to tell you this. If I am hurt on a Sunday going to, from going to church and an accident, I want the doctors and nurses working. Okay, how many know? I want people responding. And so to me to say, hey, no one should work, and that's crazy in our day and age. That's crazy. But we shouldn't be legalistic about it. You know, so I, and I would encourage you, if, if you work on, a, on the Sabbath, a, on a Sunday Sabbath or on a regular Sabbath Saturday, you know, pick a Sabbath day. Pick a day and make it, make it your day. Pick a day to rest. Um, I work on Sundays just like the Old Testament priests do, did, right? And the New Testament priests, doctors, nurses, you know, they work to take care of people. Uh, Jesus said it was lawful to do good on a Sunday. Farmers got to feed their animals. Um, you know, cows really don't care what day of the week it is. They need to be milked. How many know that? They got to be fed. And Jesus recognized that. Understand, if your job requires that you work on a Sunday, then it's important to set aside another day of the week to observe as a Sabbath day. It's, it's, and the important thing is that we set that time for rest. As human beings, like I said, our creator, he, he did not design us to work seven days a week. Our bodies and our souls, our spirit need that rest. We come together tonight for FaceTime. If those of you are coming tonight, you know, that is... You know, you might say, well, that's doing, that's, that's not resting. I'm telling you what, that's feeding the spirit. That is feeding the spirit. And, and that's what we need. Feed what has been depleted all week. Feed what, what needs to be uh, taken care of, you know. But those of us who have workaholic tendencies, any workaholics here? Okay, the rest of you must be in rehab because you're not admitting it or something. <laughs> you know, we may find it difficult to get into the habit of regularly scheduled day off to set aside for God, but we need it. 
You know, it should always be something we look forward to. And I would encourage you to try to not make it a day that you slide around on the calendar according to, well, I'm going to do the miss, going to this with a friend and do this, so I'll make my Sabbath day on this day. There's discipline involved. Discipline is good by keeping the same day. We should do that. Uh, but it's important to have that. Hebrews 10, 25 also tells us this, that we should not be forsaking our own assembling together as is the habit of some, but doing what? Encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. How many know that the day of God is drawing near? It's coming faster and faster. I'm looking at the times. I'm looking at signs. I say, wow. So it's important to do this with other Christians, other believers. And so it's, a, it's, it's, so it's practical that we agree on what day we're going to meet. You know, some people say, well, the Sabbath day to meet for worship of God should be on the Sabbath itself. You know, and we've agreed that meeting on Sunday, the first of the Lord's day is what we're doing. That's the, that's the important thing, right? That we get together, we worship together on this day. Uh, the body of believers, when we do this, is encouraged. It's built up when we come together. And Sunday, the first day of the week, the day which Jesus uh, res was resurrected, occurred on that day. And that's a great day to do that, to celebrate that. You know, I was doing research and I saw that, that people, um, the first century church, for about 200 years, they, they worshipped Jesus or on that first Sunday because of his resurrection. And then, it, then after about 200 years, it morphed into this thing about worshipping Jesus because of his death. I don't know about you, but I, the, the death is a powerful thing. A good, a good Friday was a powerful thing. I'm going to tell you what, Resurrection Sunday for me is, you know, that... That is so important to me, and, and, and I like that, that notion, getting back to that type of thing because of his death. Um, in our culture, Sundays used to be seen as a family day. I don't know if it's seen that way much anymore. It should be. But busy dads, busy moms, busy teens, busy children all need to make sure we get our regular time to spend with each other, with family. Our families are disintegrating. They're falling apart. And I'll tell you what, losing the family time together is a big reason why that's happening in our culture today. Um, uh, it's more important we spend that time with the Lord. In fact, I would say this. It's even more important that you spend time with the Lord than with your family. If you don't get any time with the Lord, you need to spend that time with the Lord. God first, right? God first, then you bring them in the pecking order. So we do what we can on the Sabbath day and keep it holy. You know, um, it's, it's interesting. I was looking, uh, the couple quotes here I have, I found that no song without a voice. There's no music without an instrument. No soul without a body. And no Sabbath joy without Sabbath blessing. So true. And I believe God will honor the effort to reserve the day for him. And if you have a job, it means you work on, you work on Sunday on the Sabbath day. Just try and minimize that. Just don't take the overtime. Just, and I'll tell you what, you might say, Tim, I need the overtime. I need the, the extra money, the extra income. You give, you give what's due to God and he'll handle the rest. God's economy cannot be figured out. God's economy can't be worked through. But you give to God what, what belongs to God and you watch him take over the rest. You know, so if you're looking for overtime on the weekend, I challenge you. Give it up for a month and see what happens. It's pretty amazing the way that God works that through. In fact, um, um, if you have a, a Billy Graham once said this, Jesus tells us it's OK. Um, let's see if I have this. Maybe I have this. Jesus tells us it's okay to help our ox out of the ditch on the Sabbath. But if your ox gets in the ditch every Sabbath, you need to either get rid of the ox or fill up the ditch. <laughs> That's pretty good, right? <laughs> I thought that was great. So we try to get stuff done before the Sabbath and take the Sabbath, make the Sabbath holy, keep the Sabbath, whether it's a regular Saturday, Saturday Sabbath or the Christian Sabbath on, on Sunday, keep it that way. You know, one of the things that has happened is that, that we've just lost sight of this. Um, with this pandemic, for example, I don't know if you knew this, but George Bush, um, he put together a pandemic task force. And he fought to get that in the budget, and he budgeted. And as the years went on, it, was, it got less in the budget, less money for it, less money for it. Finally, there's no pandemic, pandemic task force anymore. It was just completely removed. And the reason was that there's no pandemic. 
it's, it's really hard to budget for something that you don't see, budget for something that you don't have. And that's what happens with the Sabbath day. You know, I believe the Lord is returning and he's calling us one day, but he's not here yet. We need to be building ourselves up and we need to be worshiping together. We need to be setting time out for that as well. You know, just because we can't see God doesn't mean he's not important. God is more important than anything you've got. And so often it's out of sight, out of mind. We don't see God. We don't see this. And so we do that. So we have to strive to keep it special. So is the Sabbath day holy, still holy? It is to me. Is it to you? It's going to be up to you to, to say if it's holy or not. It's up to you to know if you're going to keep it or not. And I want to encourage you, whatever it takes, make the Sabbath, whether it's our day, the Lord's day, or a Jewish Sabbath day, whatever you feel compelled to do, convicted to do, make it the holy day that it needs to be. I'm going to work at it. I hope you do too.